just thank you, Lord, for this moment, Lord. We just thank you for this morning. We thank you that you love us, Lord God, and that you are here for us. And we do pray, Lord, that you would transform us, that you would conform us, that you would change us according to your perfect will, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we love you. We want more of you. Do what only you can do, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 43. The turn Isaiah 43. I'll be there in just a moment. Good to be in uh, God's house and uh, exciting, uh, excited that uh, hey that uh, God is there with us, that He loves us, and uh, that was I was just excited beforehand. I was walking around the property and praying, and just can feel the God's presence here this moment. Amen. Amen. And uh, just hey, I'm just excited. The band looked like they were having a good time, and all the songs were touching my heart, but especially yes. "Stay Strong." Uh, yes. Listen, uh, we're on a, in life, and as Christians, we're on a marathon. We're, you know, I've done dashes, and I play softball occasionally, and those are dashing to first base, or you know, dashing to second. Hopefully, you dash all the way home. But uh, in, in life, we're on a, a marathon, and and uh, as a Christian walk, and one thing uh, that doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that by being uh, a believer, by being a Christian, that it, it'll be easy. Now, it'll be easier. It's easier in the sense that Jesus is with us. And if we don't carry the load, which we're not called to, to carry the load, then then uh, then it's easier. But things happen in life, whether Christian or non-Christian. And amen. I hear some amens. We know that. And uh, just for a moment, I just want to share a, a scripture that God placed on my heart from the beginning. Uh, God placed it on my heart to plant a church. And also uh, when I was getting... Uh, when I was marrying Melissa, and, and so anyways, Isaiah 43, 18, uh, Isaiah 43, 18, and 19, and uh, today, the, the, the sub-theme or the, for today's specific message is going to be, it is finished, it is finished, we've been taking the last words of Jesus, and I've been taking different ones, and, and being uh, uh, specific sermons and messages about them, but uh, we're going to look at those seven, those seven words in a few moments, but I want to key in on it is finished in, in a few moments. But first, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Yes. Now I'm going to read it one more time. And I hope, I hope it... That sticks to our hearts and and uh, reminds me of of what it's all about. That that we'll remember that that uh, we're no longer the same people. That we're no longer the same as as our past. And our past does not define us uh, as Christians, as homes, or or as a as a believers, as a church. But listen, forget the former things. And listen, when I'm driving down the road, now I see people drive crazy. I go to 45, and people. Man, when you see someone driving, how can I put it slow, fast, left lane, right lane, or kind of going like this? Uh, guess what they're doing? They're on their cell phones. All right? And so, but listen to this, but when we're looking forward, is we're looking straight ahead. And we're focused, and our eyes are fixed on what Jesus has. And I fully believe on, on this uh, Pente uh, Pentecost, I believe it is. It, listen to what it was about is harvest, but it's also more also understand this is about hearing what God would speak to each one of our lives. It's about hearing the voice of God. It's about believing that He is enough. Matter of fact, He's all we need. It's not about all we have or someone has. It's about what Jesus has. What does it say there at the end of verse 19? In streams and the wasteland. Well, He'll bring fresh life. And away in the wilderness. So as we uh, turn to the next slide, Fabian, I want to relate that for just a moment 
of just a basic, just a, a little bit of what is on our website and a little bit of what we have defined of what we're about as, as a church and we relate even as believers. And uh, we exist to reach people for Jesus Christ, build sincere, transparent relationships, and to teach relevant, authentic messages that transform lives. So first, uh, I'll touch the last one first. Uh, we want to be as effective as possible at uh, what we do on Sunday mornings, uh, when we come together for Bible study, any part of this. As a body of believers, we want to be as, as effective as possible and uh, delivering the message in our lives, but also as a, as a church. Amen? Amen? And that's with, you know, from the, the music to the preaching to, the, I mean, just everything. Just all around, keep improving. And, and listen, this is uh, no one, we're, we're, we, I've been talking about for, for months, uh, is that we're not praying for perfect people. We're, I'm not praying for us or anyone that walks through these doors. I'm not going, give me this perfect person. That, no one's perfect, but we're praying for for, pe for us to keep growing and that God would bring those He would send that that He that will love and, and continue to see God work in and, and transform and conform that we were just singing about. And see, that's the ones that God will do the biggest and greatest work. That second one was build sincere, transparent relationships. See, it's about, more than anything, it's about a relationship with Jesus. It's about a relationship of reaching us from being messed up to blessed up, but then also reaching out and caring for, for one another. And then the other one, the first one, reach people for Jesus. That uh, we as, as a, a church plant, a, a new, new, relatively new church, uh, but even as believers, is, listen, God doesn't want anyone to perish. He, he wants everyone to, to come to His love. And for, for us, uh, I pray it's our desire within our hearts to reach people for, for the kingdom first, uh, to, that they would know Jesus, that they would know that there is a, a better way in life, and the better way is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father except through Him. But also, as uh, we want people to come to the kingdom first and foremost, but also we believe there's many people that, that this church, this, a new destiny, that, that this is a place that God is calling many, drawing many people, and that that to people that, and this atmosphere and this environment, you know, us, that would be a place that they can be cared for and, and loved. So on the next slide, I, I wrote just a few basic things, that, that uh, a few keys that, as a church, as believers. First, it sounds simple, but I think we forget. We talked, I mentioned a moment ago, but prayer, reaching upward. We need to make sure that we're spending the intimate time in His presence as believers, as families, couples, but also as a, as a church. And see, we can do, there's churches out there that, that, uh, that know that we're not competition and I'm not giving names to, to, either way, but there's churches that got it. They got all the stuff together and they might be drawing people, but all that's for naught if, if it's not truly of God, if it's not truly uh, from being in His presence and, and God touching lives. If it's just because the church has the latest and greatest and the best this, the best facility, they have the, the full game room and all that stuff for the youth and, and all that stuff is, I'm not, not knocking it, but most importantly is the Word of God. The most important thing is, is, is God's love coming through one another. The most important thing is as people to know Jesus Christ. Second here I mentioned is, is love. Checking our heart and reaching inward. What we're just talking about with that, that scripture is, is what? To not allow anything or any offense to stick in our hearts. Is there will be people that are, as, as Paul talks about, I die daily. He, he, uh, he would go in the, the presence of God. And, and, uh, and this is for all of us, including myself. Is that we make sure that, that uh, our heart is pure before the Lord is holiness, holiness, as the song we were just singing. And as we do that, we can hear God's uh, voice. And, and then I, I put uh, work. Believe it or not, uh, it takes work in and, and a marriage. It takes work as a, a believer. It takes work to, to live life unless, uh, you know, we're going to, well, I won't go there. I was going to say we can be lazy and expect handouts and all that, but 
But no, the Word of God says not to be idle. It says it takes work if you, if you want to live, if you want to eat. And, and in the same way, as, as, a, as a church, as believers, it takes, it takes work to, to reach people. It takes work to, to love one another. And, and so, um, you know, before, uh, I'm going to mention just a couple things, but, um, and Sandy mentioned a few things as well. But, um, you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to, to everyone here. Some of the people that are here. But uh, <clears throat> I just appreciate it. There's many people that have poured in prayer. Both people from here, but people that have partnered with us. And uh, I just love the atmosphere this, this morning that God's presence is here and touching lives. And I just say thank you. There's many that step up and helping and, and different things with, with the church that aren't necessarily noticed or seen. It's not like... We don't need to go around and, and sometimes we'll say specific thank yous, but you know, it's not like we have to go. I did, you know. <laughs> and and what is it? It's just a matter of this is our church. This is God's church. But man, when we begin to step up, we'll see amazing things. And uh, I want to mention this is I truly believe within those who are here today and those who call this this church, those who have been coming to whatever regularity. I believe there is not a, 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 sh a short supply of resources. There's not, God has all, everything that is needed for us to continue to grow spiritually, emotionally as people, and, and, to, and to grow in every area, including to, to reach people. And one thing, I, I mentioned a, a couple of things on this slide that, that we uh, have done or recently is, is Jerry has done a great job with the website and he keeps improving with it. And uh, recently he's worked on, there's things out there on ways that when you do certain things, uh, they call it tagging or, you know, sometimes you what little slash things and I, I don't understand at all, but he's been working on that the last few weeks. Uh, we've got flyers. Uh, if you like copies, we'll make copies, but, uh, you know, flyers, are, they're not like the key, just, uh, in other words, you just take a flyer somewhere, but handing the people, putting the newspaper boxes or whatever it may be, I'll say this is we got a lot of toner or not worried about toner and uh, we, you can take as many as you like uh, we mentioned some community uh, events that we're looking to do and sometime uh, probably in early August is the first round day but before we just throw out events uh, you know I've seen people around this road just uh, do different things you know yard sales we've seen uh, barbecues and uh, we've seen hot dogs and people come but here's what, what I'm throwing out is I'm going to pray before I go into the message. Because I believe within those who are here, even the now that's here, those that might see you on the video, that God can instill within us ideas and visions and dreams for now and in the near future and even the all-distance future. Because when it's from God, it'll happen. It's a sure thing. Amen. When it's from God, you begin to see the fruit. And you begin to see things that we couldn't have came up ourselves. It might be something that we see another church has done. It might be something something like that that's tweaked. Or maybe it's just something totally brand new. A new thing. Amen? Yeah. And so I'm going, to pray, I'm going to pray and then we'll go into the, the message, the, the main word. But I truly believe right in this house, right in this sanctuary, right this morning, be a, you'll be amazed at what God can do through us. Lord God, I just thank you as we go into the Word that you, Lord God, would speak into each one of our lives. I pray that you would refresh us in the name of Jesus. That you would re-energize us, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray that our relationship with you would be more and more real, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That we would be focused on, yes, staying true to you, staying true to the Word of God. But we'd also stay true to, we want to reach our family, our, our neighbors, our friends, other people. So they would come to you. We know that you don't want anyone to perish. And Lord, I pray, I ask, Lord God, with this morning and now and throughout the message and the altar time, 
that you would begin to give us fresh vision, fresh, fresh dreams, new dreams, Lord God. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. It's all right. Uh, like I said, this morning we're doing a final last words of the series, but I'm looking at uh, it is finished as the main theme for this morning. Final last words. And the passage of the text is, is Luke 23, Luke 23. I'm going to actually, uh, I've read it the last few weeks, but you're welcome to go ahead and turn there. We're going to look at certain of uh, the seven last words we just that, that we're mentioning. And uh, like I said, a few of them I've gone over in more detail, but I'm going to hit it is finished is the main one. How do we know that that our past is finished? That, that the, the, the sin and, and Satan, it, it's done. We, we know the end of the, I know the end of the book. We, we know that Jesus wins. So first one, if you want to write this down, is Luke 23, 34, is forgive. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. One of the, the words that, we, that Jesus mentions as he's on the cross and as they throw in insults and they, as they were sneering and as, as people were just, just making a laughing stock of, of Jesus and this was part of entertainment in this day, as he looks out and he calls out to the Father, to his Father, Father God, and he says, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. And mind you, I would say that would have to, I couldn't imagine of being able to, to do that without the grace of God to, to go, uh, Father, forgive these people that have insulted me, the people that are not receiving what I'm doing. But then you look on the second one that, uh, the second words of Luke 23, 43, it says, Jesus answered, and truly I tell you, today you will be in paradise with me. And I put on their friend. See, he's our friend. Jesus is every one of our friends. And last week, as we mentioned specifically on the three crosses, and, and we mentioned that the one on the left was the one that was still jeering and, and he was insulting Jesus, he was talking about how he, he's a victim and, and how he, he had a bad life and, and how it, everything's been unfair. And, but then the one on the right, what did he do? He calls out to Jesus and said, said what? Oh, the one on the, the right, he, he, was a, he saw the same thing the one on the left saw, but what was the difference? He calls out to Jesus and said, my life has been unfair. I, I've gone through a lot. This is things I believe he may have been thinking, but he said, Jesus, will you receive me? Will you forgive me? Will you? And what does Jesus do? He said, friend, friend, all your life. I mean, most people are thinking, all your life you, you've lived a, a bad life. And you've done horrendous things to be crucified. But what Jesus says, friend, today you'll be in paradise. Today it's, it, it is finished for what I've been called to do, but what I've been called to do, you're going to be the first one after it's done to, to receive it. You're going with me to paradise. Imagine that. This, this thief, the, this criminal is the first one to receive what Jesus is doing to pay the price for everyone from the past to the present to the future of the sins being weighed. Hey, Samuel, you're with me in paradise. Imagine that. A thief, a criminal. Thirdly, as we look, is compassion. And here's Jesus, some of the final last words. He, he's having compassion for his mother. In John 19, 26 through 27, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to a woman, here is your son. And so if you look at the passage, it, it, and read through that, you'll see that the one that was the disciple, that was the beloved, is, is who is John. And so Jesus was concerned about his family, and he instructed John to care for Mary, Jesus' mother. So here he is, feeling the weight of the sin of the, the world, feeling the, the weight of the sin from, from the past to the present, to the future, feeling the, the weight of the, the world upon him. And 
Harry sees his, his mother and he has concern for his mother. He's making sure that she is taken care of. He has compassion for his mom and asks that his John the Beloved, the disciple, to take care of her and to disciple to take care of her. Verse 26 and 27, here is, here is your mother from that time on. The disciple took her into his home. That's John 19, 26 and 27. And number four cries out, Matthew 27, 46. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. And I am not good on this pronunciation on this, but Eli, Eli, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so even in the midst, let's catch this, even in the midst of following through what he's called to do, Jesus, even in the midst of obeying and and yes, it's Jesus the Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God. Even in the midst of, of doing what He's supposed to do, relate that this, relate it to us, to each one of us. And as even in the midst of doing what God wants us to do, even as we're moving forward and obeying and, and listening to God's voice, there'll still be at times we'll cry out, this is a lot more weight than God that I feel like I can handle. If Jesus is crying out to his Father the same way for each one of us, even in his heart he knows, in his mind he knows that, that it, he's doing what he's supposed to and it's about to be finished and it's finished, but he cries out. He cries out to his Father and, and saying, Lord, he's saying, Father, help me. Father, I, he, my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? And at that moment, what we need to understand is, I believe it, the presence of his father, he was felt all Jesus felt all alone and felt like nobody was with him and it was just him. And sometimes in our life we'll feel that way. Sometimes we'll feel that there's not a friend or a family person or no one and we're all alone. Even in the midst of obeying God, even in the midst of doing the right stuff. And that's the way that Jesus felt as he's on the cross, as he's doing what he's supposed to do. Fifthly, thirsty, John 19, 28, later knowing that everything had, had now been finished and so, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. I'll just mention it. You can read more into that, but he physically was thirsty and they mentioned it and it's uh, in prophecy. But number six, finished. John 19, 30, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. A little bit of commentary, historic. Although the redemption of mankind is the most important finished task, many other things were finished at the cross. The sufferings of Jesus Endured while on the earth, and especially in his last hours. Where at last over, God's will for Jesus was accomplished in his perfect obedience to the Father. Most importantly, the power of sin and Satan was finished. Amen? Amen. The power of sin and Satan was finished. No longer would mankind have to suffer the flaming arrows of the devil. We can raise the shield of faith in the one who completed the work of redemption and salvation. It is finished. Amen. Amen. Yes, that, that should be a clap offering for, for Jesus. And so even going through a physical pain, and, and many believe that Jesus, most historians believe that, that when they were crucified, they were crucified naked. They, their clothes were stripped off. At minimum, they had just a little, something small here, but imagine this. He's still being hurled insults, and, and what does he say? I'm, you know, he's thirsty, but then what does he do? He's, he's, in, he's about to, to, to die, and he says, it's finished. And what was he saying? He's saying that he, he fulfilled the will of the Father. He's saying he made it. He, he's saying that the weight of every sin from creation until now and throughout history, that he took with those nails, he took on those feet, that he took with every slash, with every whip on his back, is that he was saying, I've taken every person's sin, every person's disobedience, 
And when he's saying it is finished, he's also saying that your past is no longer you. Your past doesn't define you. I define you. I say that you're special. I say that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I say that you can be healed in the name of Jesus. Just as I tell the, the thief, the one that came to repentance, he says to every one of us is that we no longer are this, the past, but it's finished in our own lives. It is finished. And we can move forward in life. In Luke 23, 46, it said, Jesus called out trust. The, Called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And then in 2 Corinthians 5.17, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man, anyone, be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Praise God. The old is gone. The, the new has come. Listen, our old mistakes are the past. Our old sins are, are done with. Our old uh, challenges are over with. And what does he say? That he's doing a new thing as we read earlier in, in Isaiah. But he's saying we are a new creation, a, a new creature. Old things are gone. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new. I think the Lord would ask, I think God would ask us today is which where we stand today is are we receiving all he has for us and what he did on the cross and when he said it is finished? Are we accepting and taking everything he has for us? Are we are our ears open to, to hear his voice? Are, are we saying, no, I don't believe it's possible for people, because look at this example, but instead are we going, you know what, he doesn't want anyone to perish, and I believe that God's going to transform my life more and more, but we're going to see people through our lives and church and so forth that are going to be like this one, over and over that have messed up. We're going to see, transform me, conform me, make me new in you, that are going to come salvation that are going to come to Jesus. Not just to come to Jesus, but come and, and, and with new with new life as a new creation. Amen? Amen. And so as we look at the next slide, I want us to look at this video clip, this uh, sermon jam. And uh, we're going to close in just a moment. Go ahead, uh, Fabian. from the dead. He conquered the final enemy, death itself. Everything has changed. If he rose again, life will never be the same as we know it. The gospel is the good news. It's the good news about God sending his son Jesus who came to triumph in this life. Who came to live a sinless life, a perfect life. A selfless life. That he would give us life as a sacrifice on the cross. But he did not just die. He rose again on the third day. Resurrection is what makes the news good.
Amen, amen. Praise God that Jesus took it all on the cross that we may be set free from sin and the burden of our past. Past failures, past sins. And today we can say it is finished. My past is no longer. I am new in Jesus. The power of sin and Satan in our lives is finished. In 2 Peter 3.9 it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. As some understand slowness, instead He is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I want to ask uh, Tim, he's going to be ready. And uh, he's going to play a song. I ask us to all listen and with ears to hear. It's a, a song that's from Third Day. It's a song that tells a story of, of the thief, this thief. It's telling the story from his perspective. And uh, just think about this. Imagine our own lives. Maybe we have seen being on a wavering life or we've just seen different things happen. But imagine how Jesus, the last moment for, for Him, the last moment for His life comes through, but also that our eyes be open for those around us. So I want to, I want to pray. And then as Tim plays this, we're going to go ahead and begin to get in the mode of prayer of seeking the Lord. Lord God, we just thank You that You love each one of us. Lord God, we just thank you for your great love for each one of our lives. And Lord God, I ask that you would help us as we looked at this passage, as we looked at the last words of Jesus on the, on the cross, uh, that our hearts be open to, to fully receive all you have for us, Jesus, as our past is finished. Sin in our lives is we can say that it's finished. It does not have a hold of us, no chains on us. And Lord, as we listen to this song, as we listen to the, the story, it may penetrate our hearts and our lives. And as we listen and we find a place in our seats or this altar, for a few minutes, that we'll find a place to see. And we thank you.